Hi, it's Mrs. Golding. I want to give you a little conversation about Graph of the Week 20, which is due on January 15th. Okay, so um, it seemed like over Christmas break, whenever I was watching, um, I don't know, I watched a whole bunch of Hallmark Hallmark movies, and there were commercials for Peloton. Um, anybody seen those? So Peloton, um, is it just a bike, I guess, or does it have more stuff? I guess the one that I see all the time is that bike where they're um, trucking along and they've got the person um, like on the video that's encouraging them to go faster, go further. Um, and notice nobody punches that screen and says, be quiet, I'm tired, right? They don't say that. But anyway, that's what Peloton is. And so um, it's basically having the way to exercise in your home. And so this graph is saying, the title says investors, that's people that give money to companies that they think are going to be successful. So if you've ever watched Shark, Shark Tank, is that what it's called? I feel like that's what it's called. Those guys and gals are investors. They have money and they're going to invest in companies that they think are going to be successful. So this says investors back. That means they support investors back Peloton as traditional gyms close their doors. So why would traditional gyms close their doors? Again, we're back to COVID, right? So much of so many of the graphs that I'm showing you have a foundation in COVID. And so let's look here. I know when I first looked at this graph, I didn't quite understand it. Um, I mean, I see that it's a line graph and I, I, you know, I get that. I can see that on the x-axis I have the date. This is February 2020 um, and March 2020, right? So February and March. That is right. So February is right before we got kicked out of school. Remember that? So March 13th, I remember pretty sure it was March 13th and it was Friday the 13th that we were told, go home, you might come back in two weeks, and then we just didn't come back. And so that happened in March right here. So if I take this line all the way up, this line marks when that happened, when we, when we actually more like, like right here, right? Because it's like when the beginning, the couple weeks into March. And so here is COVID, blah, right when it started to really kick in. And so then let's talk about what these lines mean. So the first line, the blue line, this dark blue line is Peloton. So how's Peloton doing, right? So they're coming along, they're, they're doing okay, you know, and then they're kind of declining. People aren't really, and notice from February to March, maybe the weather's getting nicer. So people actually maybe ride their bike outside. I don't know. It's going along. Yada, 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 yada. Then right here, choom, remember right about here is where um, COVID hit. The sales of Peloton went <laughs> straight. Whoosh. Total increase. See the slope of that? Positive, right? Positive slope going up. Okay. The trend is very positive, meaning it's been kept. And so that's why investors are like, yeah, put in my money there, baby, because they can't go to the gym. The gyms are closed. Um, so you can't do that. So they want to invest in that. The red line is Planet Fitness. That's a gym, right? That's a gym people go to. It's going along February. Oh, January, people make all their New Year's resolutions. I'm going to the gym every day. Then they stop going to the gym. But then COVID hits right about here. And then, bam, ain't nobody going to the gym, right? So that means... Um, that company is really kind of losing money. So then you've got something called Town Sports International. I had to totally look that up. Town Sports International owns and operates health fitness clubs. So I guess this one has like a racket sports, pools, basketball courts. Sounds great. We don't have them here. Um, must be somewhere else. But again, it's like Planet Fitness. Is that the other one? Yeah. But you notice, same thing going along, and then bam, they really took a hit right here. They came back up. This is my I wonder, like, 
th- this is really strange. So I'm like, why did it pop up? Like go way down, pop up, and then go down again. I, I'm really like I haven't pinned that down yet. So if you if you think about that, maybe you can figure out why that would happen. And this one, remember, offers racket, sports, pools, basketball courts, recreational activities, personal training, massage, steam room, sports clubs for kids, fitness assessments. I just cannot figure out why it had that shape. Why did it, at the beginning of COVID, all of a sudden increase and then, bam, decrease? So that's an I wonder for me. So if I was typing this, I'd be like, I wonder why that Town Sports International, which is made up of companies that do yada yada, why did that have a huge increase right when COVID started and then decrease? Think about it. I don't know. And then finally, S and P. Oh, I can't remember what the S and the P stand for. Maybe you can look that up. S and P 500 is, and I put it down here. What is S and P 500? It's a stock market. Ooh, maybe it stands for stock. Stock market index that measures the performance. Ooh, maybe it's stocks and performance of about 500 companies in the U.S. So. It, when you talk about what is how is the S and P five hundred doing? That's like all the these five hundred companies. It gives you a picture of what they call the health of the stock market. So it's kind of like how are just in general how are companies doing like overall? And so that's this green line. It's going okay, you know. And then notice it it doesn't it does have that same shape. It's weird kind of has that same shape that that Peloton had. I, it's very curious to me. I really got to think about that. But then it's kind of going along. But what you can see is when you look at a company in relation to S&P 500, Peloton was actually doing better than most companies, right? Here in February even. So they were doing great. They kind of declined and then they had a huge rebound, Right back up to where they were probably and maybe probably even higher at this point. I'm, I'm curious. Another thing I would wonder if I was typing this, I wonder how Peloton is doing now. You could even look that up and kind of see something like this. Okay. So that's that first graph. The second graph where health app usage is most common. I don't know exactly know why I put this on here, but it works. Um, it's interesting. Remember, you can talk about one or both graphs, so you might choose this one. I always tell you, you got to look at not just the big title, but the little title, okay? The little title, uh, subtitle, they call that, says share of respondents in selected countries who had used a health app in the past 12 months. A respondent is someone that responded to the survey, And surveys come in all shapes and forms. Maybe it was on Facebook. Maybe it was mailed to them. Maybe it was somebody that was taking a poll, walking around the town, right? Um, But these people chose to respond to that survey um, in the past 12 months. So somebody came up to them and said, in the past uh, year, um, have you used a health app? So what would a health app be? So there are some health apps that I can think of that measure like um, calories where you can put in your calories. I think there's one called MyFitnessPal. I used that once. It was successful. I'm too lazy to do it now and I like to eat too much. So um, there's other ones I guess you would call a health app like Calm that helps you with meditation. Uh, There's tons of health apps. Um, You actually even have things that measure your like keep track of your menstrual cycle. Sorry boys. Um, You got things that Um, keep track of, I guess, like your steps and stuff like that, right? The mileage that you go on a bike, like if you're going on a bike ride, anyway, that's a health app, like on your phone or even on those watch on your, yeah, what's that called? I, I, I don't have one. I don't have one. I, Apple iWatch, I don't know. Um, So if you look down here, let's look at the key. You have this dark green. It's a paid app, right? Paid app usage. 
and then total app usage. So this one, th so this, um, why is that like that? Oh, okay. So that's, I think that's why this is funky. So the way they write this paid app usage and total app usage, if you look at this light green, that's the unpaid apps. That's the free apps, right? That's all I ever get. I don't, yeah, I don't think I pay for very much. So paid apps, dark green, unpaid, light green, total is both of them together. And both of them together, they give you a percentage. But what is it a percentage of? So I'm looking here, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. What is this x-axis? That's what I'm trying to figure out, right? So let's see if we can look down here. 1,000 to 4,000 respondents per country surveyed. Okay, that's kind of broad. Um, but what is this? Is this 10 people? Is this 20 people? 30? No, I don't. I don't think so. Is it 50 people? Is it um, apps? Is this percentage of people? So this is share. So it's the percentage of the people that had used a health app in the past 12 months. So maybe this is number of apps. That is part of the reason why I put this on here. I think this is a little strange for a graph. And when you're a consumer of data, you got to learn to ask questions like this. And maybe you know, maybe it's obvious to you what this x-axis is. It's not very obvious to me, to tell you the truth. Maybe you can ask somebody at home what they think. Maybe it's the number of apps. Maybe it's the number of minutes on an app. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. So my I wonder might be, I wonder what that x-axis represents. But I do see what they're trying to say. It looks to me like the largest percentage of respondents um, in 65% in China. China has the biggest share of those who use um, health apps. India has the second highest. Indonesia, United States is actually fourth, and Japan is the smallest, right? It's pretty tiny, their share of um, respondents who had used a health app in the past 12 months. You could ask yourself why you think that is. China, why? Um, United States, why isn't United States on top? You might talk about obesity in the United States, You you might, or you might just talk about uh, you know, other things that are available to people that might not be an app. Um, why is Japan the smallest percentage? What do you know about Japan? I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe you could talk about things like rural areas where there's no internet connectivity. Maybe there's more of that in Japan. I don't actually know. Um, so you could, that can be your I wonder. And it can also include, Maybe it makes you think, hmm, I want to find out. So you could do some searching. So you could talk about this tiny bit, talk about it a lot. You could do more research. Um, but there's graph number two. All right. So graph one and two. All right. Hopefully that helps you um, get a handle on this assignment. All you have to do is seven sentences. And I think I talked for way more than seven sentences. I wonder how many. Bazillion. Have a great day.